You're listening to Where You Live with Gene Sullivan. Welcome back to Where You Live. I'm Gene Sullivan, and I'm broadcasting from the True North Painting Studios. This show is brought to you by American Family Insurance, the Kim Bennett Agency, and Extreme Exteriors. You can count on Extreme Exteriors for expert installation of exterior siding, roofing, soffits, fascia decks, windows, and more. With their knowledge and experience, they can design the perfect solution to make your home beautiful and energy efficient, saving you maintenance and money for years to come. Give them a call at 763-441-1334 and tell them Gene sent you. It's time now to hear from the Community Associations Institute. The CAI Minute is brought to you by New Concepts Rental Management. Whether you're an accidental landlord or a seasoned investor, New Concepts Rental Management can advise and guide you through every aspect of the business. Give us a call at 952-922-2500. Are you a member of the Community Associations Institute? For nearly 40 years, CAI has provided education and resources to volunteer homeowners who govern community associations and the professionals who support them. Visit caionline.org to learn more. The address again is caionline.org. CAI helps community associations board members by providing online resources, in-person training, and hard copy publications written by association management experts. CAI offers community managers professional development, networking opportunities, and a certification program that is established as the industry standard nationwide. Minnesota has its own chapter of the Community Associations Institute to bring resources and tools from community associations around the country right to your home. Visit www.cai-mn.com to learn more and become a member of CAI today. Your community and management company will benefit from your involvement. Join the Community Associations Institute today at cai-mn.com and click on membership. And speaking of CAI, we're privileged to have uh, with us uh, attorney Michael Clem, who's with Doherty Melinda. He specializes in uh, HOA law, but he also happens to be the current president this year of the Minnesota chapter of CAI. And as graciously... uh, agreed to be on our show here as we're dealing with this issue. If you're just joining us, um, a listener wrote in and said, I live in a four-unit condo association. The association's trying to save money, so now they're trying to divide up the work. He wants to pay more in his association fees. And uh, the board president said, hey, if you don't like it, uh, tough. If you want more information, have your lawyer contact me, but you can't. Uh, contact me by anything other than writing. And, uh, Michael, we were talking about the dynamics of a small association here. Uh, yeah. They're quite a bit different. And uh, But address this uh, attitude of the board president who uh, seemed to say, I mean, if it is the case where from the get-go he said, hey, don't contact, uh, don't uh, talk to me, uh, have a lawyer contact me. Yeah, you know, Really, as the association president, that person has a responsibility uh, to communicate with the owners. Uh, In certain cases where there gets to be litigation between an association and an owner, sometimes it's appropriate to have communication be between the attorneys. Uh, But in the ordinary course, that shouldn't be the case. Yeah, it it sounds like he's uh, uh, almost escalating things a lot more than would need to be here from the very get-go. Um, talk about the, uh, let's talk about the, the concern here. The, the guy said, I, uh, here's the issue. He said, I want to pay more in my association dues. Cause he said, I went into a condo association because things are going to be provided. But the association says, no, that's not the way we're going to go. What do you, what do you think of that? Well, there's, there's really two issues regarding maintenance of the common areas, which we usually call the common elements. The first issue is who's responsible to perform the work, who's responsible to actually physically do the job or hire somebody to do the job. And then the second issue is who's responsible for the cost. Typically, the declaration says that the association is responsible to perform all maintenance of the common elements, the common areas, Mm -hmm. or to hire a contractor to do the work. 
and that would include cleaning the common elements as well as the lawn mowing that the other owner is going to do. Yeah. Now, you know, the, the issue here, and, and I can see how uh, this happens in, in the back of my mind. You know, uh, a lot of times um, over the years I, I've heard the same story where homeowners in an association, they turn to the board and people on the board themselves say, we're just not, we're sick and tired of costs going up all the time. So we're just not going to raise the association dues anymore. And, uh, uh, and sometimes that is a, a uh, unfortunately, a, a, a fatal flaw that uh, they may not have the luxury of uh, maintaining. Don't you agree? It can be difficult, especially in recent years with the economy down and property values down. A lot of associations have, have faced difficult situations like that. Yeah, and, you know, you take a look at uh, a lot of governing documents will have some uh, sort of uh, mention of what authority the board will have in terms of being able to raise uh, the monthly assessment without having to go to its members for a special dispensation. And um, you can see in a small, especially in a small four-unit association, if you have utility bills with gas and water that go up and, and insurance. I could see insurance being a huge cost. One of the things I'm seeing, Michael, over the last few years is that if you have a, a, a building that has been retrofitted as a condo from an apartment building, it probably does not have a water sprinkler system for in case of fire. And I've seen insurance costs alone for uh, the premiums for uh, a uh, to be insured for a small association or any association without fire sprinklers uh, go up 20 25 percent in one year just because um, they don't have uh, that uh, element in their building and the insurance company says we don't think you're a good risk yes that can that can really put the association in a bind the board uh, can face a real dilemma deciding what to yeah. do if the if the owners don't approve the increase, but yet the statute and the documents require the association to provide certain services. Um, it's a it's a tough one. What would you What would you advise if uh, this particular association said, uh, Michael, come to our, our annual meeting? Uh, what can what What should we be thinking about? What should we do? Uh, well, with with respect to the issue of maintaining the common elements, whether it's the lawn mowing or the cleaning, uh, they need to look at their declaration to see what it says about who's currently responsible to get the work done and then how the cost is to be allocated among the owners. And I would venture a guess that probably the association has the responsibility to do the work or get it done and that the cost is allocated either equally or by percentage as part of the common expenses. Um, So if they want to change that, they would need to amend the declaration which would require a minimum of 67% approval and possibly 100% written consent from all the yeah. owners if they're going to change the allocation of the expenses. Yeah. Um, you, br- you bring up a good point here, and that is that when, uh, when everybody purchased uh, this unit, this home in this uh, association, uh, they were given the opportunity to read the governing documents and to understand how things would operate how people would relate to one another, what expectations they are to have. And now you're talking about, like you said, if if they want to change those expectations, um, you can, but the right way to do it would be to do so with an amendment to the governing documents. That's correct. Um, However, I I would not recommend that type of amendment that would, just because the the, um, owners didn't come in with the expectation that they would be performing the work on the, the common elements themselves, and that also would raise some, some potential liability issues, um, especially in the scenario that they described. If the documents currently say the association has to maintain the property, but the association is directing individual owners to do it, if one of those owners gets injured, for example, the person mowing the lawn, mm-hmm. uh, then the association is very likely liable for the, the personal injury or property damage that occurs. Um, And the association might be responsible as an employer um, and have to carry workers' compensation insurance uh, if the association is having others 
do work and the associations telling them how to do it with the association's equipment and things like that. Yeah, that, that's a that's a very good point. Uh, uh, people don't necessarily think about that, and especially, again, um, it really comes down to, like you said at the beginning of our conversation, people many times in an HOA, just because it is uh, more of the, the community, the neighborhood, and you know who you're dealing with, people tend to deal with this entity with a less formal attitude than they really should because at the end of it all, the end of the day, it's still a corporation and they need to run it uh, in accordance with uh, the governing documents of how it was set up. That's right. There really is quite a bit of flexibility under the statute and what they can do with their documents um, if everyone is in agreement. Uh, there's flexibility for them to you know, set things up in a way that, that will make sense for their association, and maybe they'll choose as a group to go ahead and have individuals do more maintenance work, uh, but then they really should consult with an attorney to make sure that they get that set up in a way that's going to protect the association um, and be fair to the owners yeah. and, and be legal, comply with what the law requires. Yeah. Well, Michael, thanks so much uh, for uh, taking some time to uh, address this situation for our listeners here uh, this morning. Thanks, Gene. I appreciate it. Uh, folks, that is uh, attorney Michael Clem with uh, Doherty Melinda and also the current president of the Minnesota chapter of CAI. Well, we need to take a break right now. Don't go away. We've got a lot more of where you live after these messages. 